this is a very interesting problem from ISI entrance 20, uh, 2005. Uh, we are looking at the um, knowledge graph of this problem. Uh, and the main competency is this one, solving a biquadratic. But it uses variety of other ideas. For example, it uses uh, sine of an angle, so a little bit of trigonometry, a little bit of Pythagoras theorem, and um, inequalities and other stuff like completing the square. So let's move on to it and see what we can learn from this problem. So what is the setup of this problem? It says that we have a right angle triangle, something like this maybe, with side lengths A, B, C, and the smallest angle is theta. So that's a given fact, smallest angle is theta. It's a right angle triangle. Now notice that I put the side A opposite to the angle theta. So we know this fact that angle opposite uh, or rather side opposite to smallest angle to smallest angle is the smallest one in a triangle. So one can prove this fact and uh, without loss of generality we can assume that A is that side that is opposite to theta. Okay, in this triangle. So uh, A is less than or equal to B. We don't know whether the smallest side is unique or not. So A is less than or equal to B, less than C. We assume that C is the hypotenuse. So that will be the largest side of the triangle. It's possible that these A and B, these two sides, are equal. Uh, we will see that it won't be the case in this particular problem, but in general, they can be equal. Okay, so this is the given data. There is one more thing given, and that is that 1 over A, 1 over B, and 1 over C also form a right triangle. So this is a uh, extra information. This doesn't happen always. It is happening in this particular problem. So 1 over A, 1 over B, 1 over C also form a right triangle. What is our goal? We want to show that sine of theta is equal to square root of 5 minus 1 over 2. We want to show this. So maybe you can sh pause the problem here and pause this video here. Look at this um, knowledge graph and try to uh, solve the problem on your own. All right. Okay. So uh, we have assumed that A is the smallest side. It is the side opposite to the smallest angle, which is theta. And um, we also know that A square, oops, sorry, A square plus b square is equal to c square. After all, this is a right triangle. Now, a is less than or equal to b is less than or equal to c, which means if I flip it, 1 over a will be greater than or equal to 1 over b will be greater than or equal to c. If you flip a number in an inequality, the inequality flips. So suppose 5 is less than 4, this implies 1 over 5 is greater than 1 over 4. And of course, you will notice that both of these inequalities are false. But anyway, the, <laughs> the idea is this, that if you flip the inequality, if you flip the inequality, then the inequality will flip. Uh, then, then the, if, the, if you flip the number, then the inequality will flip. So let's do it the right way. This one, both of them are large. So this one is larger. So 5 is definitely larger than 4 and 1 over 5 is therefore smaller than 1 over 4. And the reason is this, that if you divide by a larger quantity, you will get smaller pieces. You should think about it like this, that it dividing by small larger number gives you smaller pieces. If you think of this 1 as a cake, 
if you divide a cake into five parts, each of these parts will be smaller compared to the situation when you divide the cake into four parts, right? Okay, so um, that's the idea. So one over A is greater than or equal to one over B is greater than or equal to one over C. Great. But we also know that they form a right triangle. They form a right triangle. And the only way that's possible is if one over A is the hypotenuse, right? It is the largest possible side of this flipped numbers, largest possible value. So now we see that one over A is strictly greater than one over B is greater than one over C, which further implies that A is strictly less than B, strictly less than C. So all these three numbers are genuinely different, uh, but that is, follow, that is following from this additional piece of information that one over A, one over B, one over C is also forming a right triangle. A word of caution, this doesn't happen always. It is happening in this particular problem. Okay. All right, so we have this. So we have this additional piece that one over A whole square is equal to one over B square plus one over C square. So this is the second equation. Of course, the first equation was a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So first equation. Okay, so now if we look at this um, information here, we want to find out sine of theta. So what is sine of theta? So sine of theta is a over c. That's the definition of sine of theta. It's the opposite the opposite over the opposite over the hypotenuse. So we want to find out the value of A over C. That's all we need from trigonometry. We just need the definition of sine of theta, not much. So sine of theta, if you do not know what it is, uh, then it is simply sine of theta for our purpose is simply the opposite, the opposite side to theta divided by the hypotenuse, which is equal to A over C. Of course, uh, sine of theta is a very beautiful function. We can discuss a lot more about it, but not in this problem. We don't need that. We just need this particular ratio. So all we need, so our goal is really the ratio of A, A, A and C. That's all from trigonometry that we need. Okay, so let's find out A over C from these two equations. So we have two equations and we want to find out A over C. Let's see how we can do it. So from the second equation or rather the first equation, we can divide both sides by C square. So let's do that. Divide both sides by C square to get A over C whole square plus B over C whole square equals to 1. That's the, that's the thing that we get from the first, uh, first equation, this one. Now, I want to do something similar with this one. So, what I'll do is, I will multiply, multiply both sides by C square. Uh, actually, let's, let's multiply both sides by B square. Let's multiply both square, both sides by b squared. So what do we have? We, we have b over a whole square, b over a whole square equal to b square by b square plus b over c whole square, b over c whole square. So this b square by b square is 1 and b over c whole square, well, that's what we will we are going to replace here. So what do we have? This is now we are st starting to solve a, an equation. So let's see a over c whole square plus let's replace this b over c whole square by b over a whole square minus 1, this quantity. So I can just take this one to this side and then we have b over c whole square. So this is 
b over c whole square. So I'm replacing this one here equals to 1. Okay, so a over c whole square plus, now we have b square by a square minus 1 equals to 1. So we, we do have something, we can do something here. We know that b square, so we know that a square plus b square is equal to c square. So b square is equal to c square minus a square. So let's do that. We have a over c whole square plus c square minus a square over a square minus 1 equals to 1. So do, let's do some more simplification a over c whole square plus c square by a square minus 1 minus 1 equal to 1. Alright, so one final thing that we want to do is a by c whole square plus c by a whole square equals to 3. You can just take this to on the other side. Now, we are almost done. We just need to find out a over c and this equation will help us to do that. So we will play a trick. We will write a over c is equal to x. Okay. Now, remember a over c, that is x, is always greater than 0. It is the ratio of two sides of a triangle. It cannot be negative. So x is greater than 0 and x is less than 1. Why? Because c, the hypotenuse, is greater than a. Hypotenuse is greater than a. So these two conditions we have to keep in mind. Uh, these will help us to remove any extraneous solution that we get. Okay, so then what do we have? We have x square plus 1 over x square equals to 3. So we can cross multiply and get x to the power 4 minus 3x square plus 1 equal to 0. So this is the equation that we want to solve. We want to find x. It's usually very hard to solve a biquadratic, but in this case, with these conditions, uh, x greater than 0, x less than 1, and the way this biquadratic is in front of us, we should be able to solve it pretty easily. So let's do one thing. Let's solve for x square first. So x square is equal to, just use uh, the quadratic formula, minus of negative 3 plus or minus square root of negative 3 square minus 4, 1, 1. So I'm just doing the quadratic formula here. So we have x square is equal to 3 plus or minus square root of 5 over 2. So this is a very unique situation. We want to take the square root of this, sir, this, this number. And in general, this could be a really hard problem. But in this particular case, we will use a trick called completing the square. Completing the square. So let's do it. Let's first multiply both the numerator and denominator by 2. So I'll just multiply both the numerator and denominator by 2. So I'll have 6 plus or minus square root of 5 times 2 by 4. Okay, so now 6 will become 5 plus or minus 2 times square root of 5 plus 1 by 4. I'm just writing it in this manner. In a moment you will see why. I can just write the 6 as 5 plus 1. This 5 plus 1 is my 6. And I can write this 5 as square root of 5 whole square plus or minus 2 square root of 5 plus 1 by 2 square. This is my x square. Now you see why I'm doing it like this because this is x square is equal to root 5 plus or minus 1 by 2 whole square. So if you are finding this a little bit fast, you can pause the video and check what we have done here. But then we get x is equal to positive root 5 plus 1 by 2, negative root 5 plus 1 by 2, positive root 5 minus 1 by 2, and negative root 5 minus 1 by 2. So four solutions. This one is greater than 1. 
we know that x is less than 1. That's what we found here. We have, this is our starting point, x is less than 1 because the denominator is larger than a. So this one cannot happen. Okay. Uh, this is negative, so this cannot happen. This is also negative, then this cannot happen. So the only case that remains is this. x is equal to square root of 5 minus 1 over 2, which is equal to sine of theta. One curious fact that you should know that uh, this is very well related to the golden ratio. And you can explore why that is the case. It's a very interesting, there is a very interesting turn in this problem. Uh, root 5 minus 1 over 2 is if, if, if golden ratio is theta or phi, whatever you, you please, then this is 1 over 5 or in fact, it is 1 minus 5. Both of them are same. Uh, oh, sorry, 5 minus 1. In fact, 5 minus 1. Anyway, so you can think about it, why this is related to the golden ratio. But, uh, but also, link in the description will take you to the knowledge graph and the key competency, which is solving the biquadratic, which, is, which was the main idea in this problem, as well as Pythagoras theorem, which we used a lot, and certainly a little bit of sine of the triangle. Link in the description will take you to all of those stuff. Uh, keep solving great problems. I'll see you in the next video.